numbers speak for themselves. And that is a mantra of the EJ movement. I think we have upheld that value, that they identify their needs, the challenges, they identify their struggles, and really importantly, they identify the solutions. That has given us that opportunity to lift those voices from all over the state of California. The state of California is actually a majority uh, people of color uh, state now. The communities of color that are most impacted by environmental policy are the ones that are now shaping environmental policy. And we have uh, community members that have lived uh, the on-the-ground impacts of uh, being next to dirty power plants and oil refineries and expanding freeways. Especially in a city like San Francisco, a landmark city through community-based planning, we're looking at sites in the neighborhoods we organize in to have them be used for community-based priorities. The Green Zones campaign in particular has been significant in, in, uh, in broadening our thinking. Yes. Chevron Refinery is right in, our, in the heart of our neighborhood and we are trying to um, build a whole new economic base for our community who have been really suffering from asthma, from all kinds of other um, pollution related diseases. The climate gap, right, is that people of color are already highly impacted. Um, they're in close proximity to our largest sources of, of greenhouse gas emissions and the drivers of climate change, and that's only going to get worse as climate change worsens. The Inland Empire is often viewed as just kind of this black hole between Los Angeles and San Diego. Trying to find our voice into state policy um, was very difficult on our own. So coming together with SEHA and having them recognize the struggles we were facing to get the policies that we all need is really a, a huge benefit to our region. SEHA is a vibrant, powerful, statewide alliance that's really um, a, uh, a model of what needs to happen in other states, whether it's in the regional trainings that are held often in various languages to inform members of the, um, of the organizations about the policy priorities or the uh, congresos that we hold in Sacramento in which upwards to a couple of hundred people come together from across the state. It really reflects a commitment to learn from one another, to engage elected officials with a unified voice. Legislators are much more receptive to the environmental justice perspective. They're starting to integrate it themselves into bills, thinking about how this legislation that they may be proposing impacts environmental justice communities. One of those great opportunities and one of those great moments was uh, when there was a bill that, uh, AB 1288, that actually created the first two environmental justice positions on the California Air Resources Board. And so really what we do here in California, a lot of other states uh, are looking to us to set the most aggressive climate and energy goals. Last year in 2015, when we passed um, historically five environmental justice policies, one of them, the Multifamily Affordable Housing Solar Roofs Program, the largest investment of solar in environmental justice communities, bringing in uh, a billion dollars over 10 years uh, to uh, build solar on multifamily affordable housing. That's where the equity really comes in, is to really close that green divide and make sure that all of the incredible infrastructure of uh, the green economy, the renewable energy, and the uh, local health and jobs and economic benefits penetrate into the communities that need it the most. Our plan is a hope, not a pollution zone. The green land of there is no planet B. What SEHA is doing is putting our communities at the front of the line, making sure that these are the communities that really benefit from the jobs that are created, from the new businesses that are created, from the cleaner air that's created by renewable energy and the transformation of our of our state's economy into a renewable energy economy. Getting into the civic engagement work, building that capacity for us to build a progressive base of voters of color in the state around environmental justice issues, that's what's building the muscle for SEHA to really implement uh, our policy agenda on a more powerful level. These are the solutions that the whole state needs. 
What's good for our communities is good for everyone. And when we win, everyone wins.